June 8, 2004, Mary, an unknown saint, speaks to mothers. Again today, I speak to mothers. Jesus, who understands all, wishes that I speak to you with the power of experience. When someone speaks to you about a skill, and you suspect that the person knows nothing about the topic he addresses, you tend to wonder why you are listening. But when someone speaks to you with the benefit of experience, you listen more carefully. Because if you are wise, you will wish to learn from that person's experience. And so avoid mistakes you might otherwise make. I wish to help you to understand the noble task of mothering that God has willed for you. If you are a mother, the parenting and direction of your child must be the first priority of each day. You must see to the child's needs before anything else. If you are working in a job where it is not possible that you do this, you must consider carefully whether or not our Lord wishes you to remain in that job. Again, I must say that I do not speak to mothers who are working to provide for food and shelter for their children. You will know yourself if you are working from necessity or working from the desire to acquire more worldly possessions than you need. Let us examine what is necessary for a child to flourish in today's world. Food, shelter and clothing are the barest concrete necessities. What kind of food does your child need? Simple food prepared at home by someone who loves the child. This is the best way to nourish a growing body. If your child is well used to eating at home and eating simple foods, that child will not demand more elaborate fare. If the child does demand more elaborate fare, you simply say no. Now we look at shelter. When a child is born and is laid in his mother's arms, he does not wonder how many rooms are in his home. He feels safe and warm and is content. That child is brought home. Again, he is not concerned with how big his house is. Rather, he is concerned that when he cries, his mother responds. The child begins to grow and look around. Still, he does not say, why don't I have a big house? Why don't I have an expensive car to drive in? He looks to his parents for guidance in this area. And if his parents are content with what that family has, then the child understands that there is no reason to complain. If a parent is discontent, and always longing for something better or something more, the child feels he too has been shorted. Mothers, please set a tone of thanksgiving 
for what you have, regardless of how humble are your possessions. Your child will do the same when you will set the course for a lifetime of contentment, rather than a lifetime of greed and covetousness. I must speak about clothing. Again, if you do not entertain thoughts of bitterness that your clothes are not as fine as the next person's, your child will think nothing of it. When he comes home and says that other children have better clothing than he does, you must say that in heaven nobody looks at clothing and begin to praise the beauty of your child's soul and the lovely virtues that are developing. My child will not like this, some will say. Again, I say to you, dear mothers, that your child will adopt the tone you set. Set a tone of simplicity in your home and explain to your child that your family rejects the notion that fine clothes and homes make fine people. Holy households make fine people and that is what you must strive for. You will find peace in your home if you try to implement these concepts because you will have all of heaven assisting you. I understand that some children have been exposed to worldly ideas and we will speak about that tomorrow. For today, concentrate on simplicity in your home.